이번 대지는 조금 많이 어렵게 걸린 것 같아요. 대지는 저희가 락스 아니면 SKT 둘 중에 한 팀이었는데 둘다 워낙 강한 팀이라 누가 걸려도 별로 상관은 없었고 저희가 더센 상대로 더 열심히 준비를 해야, 해서 이긴다면 은 정말 결승까지 직행을 할수 있을 것 같아요. 이번에 저희가 8강에 서서 졌기 때문에 이번에는 적어도 4강 이상은 가야 될것 같아요. EDG doesn't have to choose. Everyone is killable at this point. Pawn is like an anime hero. He sits on the bench, he recovers from injury, and just when they need him after everyone is dead, he comes in and saves EDG season. Superhuman performance from Pawn. LCK and LBL champions are here, supported by thousands of screaming League of Legends fans in this historic Chicago theater. EDG fans out in force. Rocks Tiger, though, they've got plenty of support here in the building. And let me tell you, these people have been loud for a while now, not just as we start the show. Now you're seeing Edward Gaming here. They're arriving at the arena just moments ago. They'll be facing a formidable Rocks Tigers. For many, the tournament favorites coming in and a tough opponent here in the quarterfinals. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson, joined tonight by a panel of experts, Alberto Crumbs Rangifo, Jake Spahn Tiberi, and Martin Deficio Lunga. Gentlemen, day three. And I've got you all on my desk, my dynamic trio, if I will. Yeah, experts is a very strong word, but we are here as good friends. And Jake and I, we got to cast yesterday with SKT, and it was a great series, honestly. As someone that got to watch it from the stand, you guys did a good job, but Ooh. the crowd was so loud and so excited for the games that I really enjoyed it. And we've had three on the first day, four on the second day. We're hoping for five games here tonight. But now, it is time to pass it down to the stage to introduce tonight's quarterfinal contenders. Hello to everyone around the world, and especially to everybody in the Chicago theater. Please put your hands together and welcome today's quarter finalists. Starting with the number one seed from the LPL, it's Edward Gaming! Starting in the top lane, Coral One. In the jungle, Clear Love. Starting mid laner, Scout. AD Carry, Deft. Support, Mako. Superstar substitute, Pawn. And their coach, Rapid Star. Put your hands together for Edward Gaming. Their opponents on the rift today, the reigning champions of LCK, the current kings of Korea, Rocks Tigers. Top lane, Smeb. Jungle Peanuts. 
mid lane, Kuro. AD carry, pray. Support, Gorilla. Substitute, Cry. And their coach, Nofe. Chicago, one more time for EDG versus Rocks. Two of our tournament favorites coming into Worlds this year. Sadly, one of them will be departing tonight and one moving on to face SK Telecom of all teams. But I mean, exactly what we have to talk about, the storyline of these teams, that they were such tournament favorites and high expectations coming in. And I don't know that you have to be sad that you get it in the quarterfinal, because at least we get it at some point in this tournament. So many people were excited to see these two late game team fighting powerhouses square off against each other on Summoner's Rift, and now we get to see it today. All right, well, let's load up the quarterfinal bracket and take the pulse of the tournament so far. Samsung Galaxy and SK Telecom T1 have secured their place on the Madison Square Garden marquee, and we'll do battle in the semifinal next week. SKT will be joined by the winner of today's matchup between Rox and EDG. Now, SKT clinched their spot after four games yesterday, looking like a strong contender for next week's semifinal. Yeah, and it was uh, honestly a super fun series to watch, especially if you're a fan of SKT, because they got to show not only great like team play, but also individual play. Like we have Fake always, we always talk about him. And then down the bot lane, bang, and of course, Wolf just had a fantastic series overall. Definitely my two MVPs, and they actually outplayed Uzi and Mata. And that's the crazy thing. We talk about the discipline, the strong team play, how good they are macro. And then RNG throw this gauntlet at the SK Telecom bottom lane, and they come up stronger as individual players, and Uzi and Mata really got to take your hat off to those And that two. strong individual play just transitions into the really crisp macro play that we always compliment them on, and the way that it shows is that they always make smarter plays and less mistakes. And that's why the plays that they make are always netting more gold. They go for the highest reward possible on the map, and that allows them to snowball really well, and that's what lets them claw back into those games, because they know what play they need to make to make sure that they stay relevant. And you know, SKT, they keep doing it to us, but a Rough group stage now heading into the final portion and they look so damn good, so damn coordinated. And you have to think that if anyone comes up against this lineup, they are going to be very hard to take down. Have to be a little bit careful. You know, we don't want to give them the title just yet. They haven't actually faced any of the other Korean teams who obviously have shown they can beat them back in Korea as well. Could be Rocks Tigers, could be Samsung in a potential final. I think SKT look fantastic but they haven't won the title yet. Well, today we'll find out if the Rocks Tigers join the other Korean squads in the next round, or if EDG can carry the banner of China to the semifinals. Now, each of these teams had huge expectations coming into Worlds, and both, well, let's be honest, they had less than stellar performances in groups. Yeah, and uh, you have to take an even closer look at EDG because now they're playing with an emergency sub. Unfortunately, Mouse, due to personal issues, is back in China, and they're bought in Koro. And people have great memories of this guy, but he hasn't played since spring finals, where they lost against RNG, which was a huge upset. He's a big team fighter. He plays a lot of Nah, Trundle, Poppy, the like that Scout also, uh, Mouse also played up in the top lane, but uh, this is going to be an uphill battle because they chose to play with Mouse over Koro this split. No doubt having an emergency sub is an added challenge for EDG, but we have seen glimpses of success for them in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, with EDG, we've seen some good games and some really bad games, but I think actually it all falls back to, to the drafting. Like, historically, we've seen them adapt well in drafts over, like, a best of five, but in best of ones, in group stage, a lot of times they would draft, like, these compositions where only one lane could really win, and if those guys didn't step up and actually played well, the team would just fall apart early on. And that is something where we've got to look at the coach, but I do think... They have infrastructure to actually adapt in a best of five series and bring up some better drafts. And the drafting just makes the job of a jungler that much harder. And we can kind of credit that to Clear Love's underperforming. We had this guy as one of the top 20 junglers in the world coming into it. Unfortunately, not the best games for him in the group stages. I do believe, however, but as you mentioned, that this team is a best of five team that they can bounce back with a solid draft with lanes that allow them to push up and make Clear Love just have free roam on the map. Yeah, and we'll see whether he can do it because you have to remember that Clear Love played 83% of his games on Rek'Sai Gragas this split, and having Gragas gutted and Rek'Sai be heavily contested and banned away from him a lot uh, actually put them in a severe disadvantage in the group stage. Yeah, and also we got to look at the fact that had like 
trouble if you look at like top lane performance was an issue so he couldn't really go top lane and rely on that one bot lane was the one he had to play around but that's very predictable so teams would kind of counter against it and ward against it so it's very hard for clear love to like find a lane he could kind of he could snowball properly and that again made him look even worse you just kind of pulled across the entire map they need to fix that for today. He needs to find the right lane to go for. And now we've talked about the emergency sub situation for the team, but we haven't talked about the standard sub situation for the team. We've got Pawn, we've got Scout. Scout will be starting today, but this is something that they have employed throughout their season. And let's talk about why Scout is starting, because Pawn started Worlds and they said they didn't want to carry two rookies in. Now with Koro back in the starting lineup, a lot of experience, they feel confident starting Scout, and he was a better mid laner throughout the entire split. They rested Pawn and he showed up at Worlds, but Scout was the go-to man during the LPL summer. And of course, there is an opportunity for them to sub him in at any point through this series after the first game. Now, on the opposite side of the rift, we have the Rocks Tigers, who also showed some weakness in groups, uh, despite being the number one seed from LCK. Yeah, and once again, I feel like we're also looking at draft uh, when we look at the Rocks Tigers. We expect a lot from them. I, when we saw the group draw, it was like, wow, okay, that's an easy group. That's a 6-0 most likely for the Rocks Tigers. But drafting-wise, they've been disrespectful, honestly. They gave Aurelian Soul over to CLG. You don't do that, first of all. And then second of all, you don't draft losing lanes across the board, because then again, in this meta, you just fall too far behind. And that has been a big issue for them. Although, to be fair, I felt like in the last two games in their group stages, they buckled down and said, we're going to pick our comfort picks. We saw Victor for Kuro. We saw two games back-to-back -back for Enot on the Elise, and he just went off. Not only able to provide enough pressure for the early game, but just having such a massive contribution in terms of damage, on top of like a million Baron seals that he had <laughs> to just keep his dreams and pretty much crush everybody else's. Yeah, exactly right. But what all this did for the Rocks Tigers is turn around what was a poor group stage early game, because this team, time and time again, were falling into holes against the likes of Albus Knox, which you just would not expect during the LCK regular season. And if you give EDG that get out of jail free card, let them get, get to the late game, that's where they can punish you. Yeah, I mean, if we, if we want to look at a positive for, for the Rocks Tigers in group stage, it was late game team fighting. Yes, EDG are also late game monsters, but the Tigers even being down like five, six K gold, they would even win late game fights. They almost came back in some of the games they lost, and actually came back in other games. Think of the G2-1 with the Baron Steel into now a one team fight due to SMEP. So because they have SMEP, who's a fantastic team fighter, and the team understands how to play around him, late game, they can still win games for sure. But I do feel that there is similarities between these teams, and people are looking at it one side due to recency bias. I mean, EDG had peaks and troughs throughout the whole of the group stages, and they're coming in as heavy underdogs. Maybe the first time that this team has ever come into a best of five heavy underdogs, whereas Rocks, they were struggling and then closed out incredibly well. Yeah, and I also want to be clear that the reason why we can be so critical of both of these teams right now is because of the expectations. It's because of what they put up in their seasons back in their home regions. They were such dominant teams that the expectation is for them to live up to that level. Yep. And if they do get to that level, my goodness, we're in for a really fantastic yeah, season. Jump off your point about rocks being fantastic in the late game team fight. ADG is the same thing. These guys are monsters at team fighting. You know, the substitute from Koro, he's able, he's known as a team fighter, and Pawn and Scout, they're able to do really well. But in particularly for me, Clear Love, everybody that jungles looks up to him and how to play the team fights properly. I think that if he can't find the ganks, that's fine. You know that he's going to be able to deliver in the team fights, especially in the best of five. Now, the one matchup that we haven't touched on, and we need to because it's arguably the closest matchup in this series, is the battle in the bot lane between Prey and Deft. And Prey is a guy that I've been looking at and admiring the whole of the summer split then coming into world spell weaving ad carries it back in and that means prey with all the utility as well as the ezreal is really shining and i think this guy is one of the most undersung heroes because his laning phase is good and his team fighting is like nothing short of brilliant yeah really nothing bad to say about prey and really nothing bad to say about deft either on the other side i feel like he is the main carry if you look at EDG, he's the guy you want to feed on EDG as well, because when it comes to both laning phase and team fighting, he's almost perfect in that regard. Give him a good matchup, he will win that lane. Give him a good, give him some good protection in team fights, he will carry that team fight as well. So I'm actually looking at Deft being like the big guy to win this for EDG, but he needs the team around him. And both of them actually have hyper carries up their back pocket. I mean, when you look at Prey, famous yeah, for his Twitch. Twitch. When you look at Death, the oh. Jinx and Twitch uh, come out as well. So I really do think that they're much more versatile than people actually think coming in with their champion pool. All right, well, let's lock in your predictions before the casters take over down the line. Who's booking our third trip to New York City? Chrome, starting with you. Well, I mean, if we look at the week two performances for both of these teams, I do feel like Rox is on an upswing and EDG was on a downswing. I feel like Rox is coming in as a stronger team, and I think that they're going to be able to take it 3-1. to one. All right, 3-1 vote here for Rox. Spawn. 
What I, I have a small fire still burning in my heart for EDG in saying that I, I, I am afraid it's about to be snuffed out. I think that Rox will take this. In saying that, I think that this is the closest quarterfinal that we will see all weekend. All righty. And Officio. Yeah, I think uh, I think Rox Tigers will take it as well, three to one. I think they just have more options in the pick and ban phase, more flexibility because they can actually play around Smep as a big carry, uh, which is going to be huge for them. And they can kind of match EDG along the way. So I think the pick and ban phase that I value very highly goes in favor of Rox, and that's why they're going to win. Well, three votes for Rox Tigers here on the desk. My vote is for five games, no matter who takes it. Now, throughout the tournament, we're bringing you an alternate take on Worlds 2016 over on Riot Games 2. Click on over to the Player Experience stream, where our team of casters are joined today by Matt and Kiwi Kid for a closer look at the top lane here in game one. SKT and their coach, Koma, are looking on with great interest at the outcome of this quarterfinal. 제가 기계도 아니고 적으로 만나지 않으면 굉장히 응원하고 있습니다. 저희 팀다 거쳐간 선수들 뭐 예찬이 뿐만 아니라 모든 선수들 경기 다 보면서 응원하고 있고요. 음 근데 적으로 만나면 그냥 말 그대로 적이죠. 죽여야 됩니다. 이겨야 돼요.